Guys, I'm going to hook up the iConnect to this machine. It's an old two-ton ream unit from the year 2000. We're going to look at how we connect the iConnect, where we put what, where we put our air probes to get all of our information. Of course, the first thing we do is pull the disconnect. Safety first, everybody. Although, if you didn't know not to pull the disconnect when you're working on AC equipment, you should probably watch a different channel. This room unit has three ports on it that we can hook up to. Here, we have our common suction port. Because no matter whether you're in cooling or heating, this will give you your suction pressure. In heating, this is the only place where you can get your suction pressure. Down here at the service valves, we have our liquid pressure. And no matter what cycle you're in, this will give you liquid pressure, whether you're in heating or cooling. Here, we have our suction pressure and cooling. Although in heating, we have our hot gas pressure. What we're going to do, we're running it in cooling, so I'm going to hook up the I-Manifold low pressure probe here. Just in case I have to introduce refrigerant, I don't want to introduce it here so close to the compressor, I introduce it at the service valve. We'll leave the service valve available for that, although we may not need to add any refrigerant. Our liquid pressure will be right here. And we'll go ahead and set that up. We'll get our pipe straps where they're supposed to be. We have our low and high pressure probes hooked up, the low pressure probe to the common suction and the high pressure probe to the liquid. In cooling, this will give us our suction pressure as well, but we don't need that. We're gonna use that for adding refrigerant if necessary. Probably not, but we'll leave that open. We're gonna hook up the pipe clamps now, which are just a little Velcro thermistor, so we're going to put those on there and I'll show you where I put them. We have our high pressure probe here. We have a line coming off here. There's two different ports. And you can just click, when you're in the app, you can designate which each port is going to measure. I have this first one designated as my subcooling liquid line temperature, which is back here inside of the unit. The line decreases on the outside to a smaller diameter, so I'm going to keep it on a 3 8 I feel like it'll get a better connection if I keep it there. On the low side probe, I have the first one is going to measure suction line temperature. It'll be right up here. That's for me getting superheat measurements. And then we have a, just a coiled up Velcro pipe clamp, which I use for temperature. There's a four inch one that they sell for this, but it's sorta, I tend to lose stuff like that. So I just use one of the pipe clamps and it does the same thing. So we have everything together where we're gonna be. We're gonna go put the air probes in now and then we can turn everything on and see how it looks. Here's our air handler sitting in a closet. And of course, as is customary, People have piled as much shit as they can in front of it. That's fine, that's what we're used to. The return probe will actually go in the return grill since it's right here at the unit. And I'll drill a hole right there for the supply. I can't get much farther unless I go to a grill, so I'm just gonna drill a hole right there and that should be sufficient. The drill I am using is this Black & Decker 20 volt lithium ion drill. It is my service drill. The reason why it has enough power to do pretty much anything I need and it's pretty small, so it works out pretty good. And I have my step drill bit on the big, on the front of the drill. I'm gonna drill a hole right there, put our probe in, and we will be happy, happy. Here's our hole that I drilled. I turned my probe on. I had the probe sitting in the hole. I can measure supply temperature. I'm gonna do the same thing with the return. I'll turn it on, then I'll turn the system on because we have our power off outside. Then I will power up our equipment outside and fire up the old iPad. We'll go ahead and turn our pressure probes on. Good, we'll get out the iConnect and turn it on as well. So we're online now, so we can go ahead and put on our iPad. Let's start us up here. I manifold the future. It says loading the awesome, I like that. Sounds like some crap that I'd say. All right. I'm going to connect to the manifold, right on, and come over here, we'll get our wireless probes here in a second, let's see, there we are, click it, wireless one, and we'll click over here, and wireless two, that is our probes, we're going to come over here and equipment profiling we're gonna go with we have some ones I picked down here I'm gonna profile a new system 
It's going to be a heat pump and cooling with a standard TXV 10 to 12 seer mid efficiency standard evaporator. Target superheat. We'll, be, we'll use these targets right here. And we're going to submit. So we all ready. Okay, we're going to fire her up and let her run for a few minutes. See how we're doing. I have my DAFM3 from UEI. That's what I use to measure airflow. I took my return probe out for a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get an airflow across this grill. See how we're doing as far as air. You know, the iManifold iConnect will estimate airflow for you, but I like to have a measurement that I get from either the grill or from static. Reason being that the estimate for the iManifold or iConnect is very accurate when the system is in good condition, but not so much when it's not. And a lot of the ones I work on are kind of, well, y'all have seen them there, not perfect. So I'm going to get a more concrete measurement to go on so I can get our BTU output. I do have a video on the UEI DAFM3 if you search for that. Our UEI DAFM3. You can see how I use it. I'm not going to go into that here because it'll just take too much time. So I'm going to go ahead and get my measurement and I'll show you all what I get. We have 555. Not too impressive. Uh, not too impressive at all. So it's a two ton system. So as you can see, that is an issue. <laughs> it is really, it's more deficient than I thought it would be. So. Well, it definitely looks awesome so far. You can see we're missing the mark. We have a a decent sub cooling, but our superheat is way too high. Typically, when you have low airflow, the superheat is low. I mean, there could be TXV issues. We had TXV issues on the previous ream on the same year at the same house. So, but what we're going to do is we're going to go over to user inputs. Let's see, measured airflow. Let's see, we're going to go to let's see, vane anemometer. We're just gonna do, we're gonna go down here to vein airflow and we have 559. Nominal tonnage is two. That ain't too good. And we're gonna go submit that. And let's go down to there's our temperatures. We still have a 15 degree split. As you see, we're 1.48 tons. 17,802 BTUs. So not too impressive at all. Other information, there's our high pressure. Corresponds to here. Liquid line temperature 78.1. As you see, condensing temperature is 84.8. That's where we get our subcooling measurement. And there it is. Superheat's 40.3. That's outdoor air. Suction line temperature, low pressure. We have probe number three on the inside with our supply air and relative humidity. As you can see, you... Let me see this. Our supply air is 52 degrees. We have an 88.9% relative humidity. A lot of guys are thinking that, hey, you know, air conditioning dehumidifies the air. But on the supply side right there, the humidity or relative humidity is extremely high. It's extremely high because the air spaces are extremely small. The air cannot hold as much water at 52 degrees than it can at the room temperature, which is 67.6. As you see, the relative humidity there is much lower because once the air expands, it can hold more water and the relative humidity will drop. There's all of our temperatures, wet bulbs. We get our wet bulb temperatures, we'll get our enthalpy of the air, and we can get our BTU output with that. There we are. There's most of the features there. We'll let her run for a few more minutes. She's looking fabulous, just like the other one. Guys, it looks like we're going to add a little bit of refrigerant to this machine, see if we can bring that superheat down. Even though our subcooling is pretty decent, we're going to see if we can make much of a difference. If not, we'll take it up to 9 or 10 degrees. If the superheat doesn't change, we'll just go with there's a restricted TXV in the system, or slightly restricted TXV. Here's what I'm going to use. has a little three-foot hose. has a little, little one-foot hose with a shutoff. I'm going to hook these up and then I'll throttle ref refrigerant in with this uh, ball valve right here. Guys, we got our sub cooling up to nine. We put about half a pound of refrigerant into the machine. As you can see, 58.6 pounds. We're right about on target, although our superheat is way too high. Things are still, for lack of a better word, out of whack. There's a TXV inside. It doesn't appear to be working all that well. 
the refrigerant lines are only about 10 foot long so we shouldn't have any skewed readings because of a long line set or anything like that so we just have we're right about freezing on the coil as you can see right here 32.1 uh, most of this time we've been below freezing so at least we're above freezing now which is a good thing sort of an imperfect solution but we're we're going to be functional especially in this particular building because it is not all that important it's just like a little guys hangout area but the system has a few issues airflow one of them loss of charge is one of them so as we go forth this guy has a few problems with his air conditioners at his house whether or not he chooses to fix them i don't know he will eventually because we already changed the one unit uh, a couple years ago but you can see how the iConnect works. It works very well. Let's go back to our BTU output one more time. One-handed like. There we are. So we have a two-ton machine with an 18-degree split, and that's because of airflow. Elevated split due to low airflow. If we had high airflow, it would be below the mark. 19,507 BTUs, 1.58 tons. So not too good for a two-ton machine. All right, guys. Hopefully you learned a little bit about how to use the iConnect. I had several questions about it, and that's why I wanted to do it. A lot of guys want to know how you hook it up, how you use it on a day-to-day -day basis. This is how I use it. So, hope you guys have a good one, and I will see you guys on the next one. I bleed for my money Day in and day out I try to give you you deserve But I'm just a college dropout Who gives his weeks to break the mean Falls in the tide line and is washed out to sea I want a worker at my